Hey everyone, welcome to my channel Crafty Travels. My name is Relly and today I'm going to be showing you how I made my very own custom makeup bags. I'm going to be using heat transfer vinyl and I'll be ironing that onto a canvas material as you can see here. So let's go ahead and get started. Today I'm going to be making my design in cry cut design space. So as you saw in the scene before, the quote I'll be using is eyebrows speak louder than words. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cute and I already had an idea of how I wanted to design it. So for this project, I made two separate text boxes. I wanted eyebrows and words to be one font and then I wanted speak louder than to be another. So keeping them separate just allowed me to do that in an easier manner. So I went ahead and selected my first text box. I aligned them in the center because that's how I imagine my design is going to look, and I chose the font that I wanted. Of course, I wanted cursive, which is a little bit more difficult because you do have to connect the letters yourself. So make sure you ungroup it as I just did, and that makes each individual letter its own field. From there, you're gonna select each letter and drag them over so they connect and make fluid cursive handwriting. I like to select my letters and use the arrow keys on my keyboard. That way they all stay in the same plane. And if it isn't exact or just how I want it, that's when I'll use my cursor to adjust just how I like to see. Once you're finished moving those around, you want to select those letters all together and weld them. That way, there's no mistake in moving any letter separate from the rest. The only issue I run into quite often with cursive letters is that sometimes, see the hole and the E got filled in, there is a way to fix that. I'm not going to be showing you guys how in this video, but curious to see how, I can definitely make another. So again, I'm also going to weld the word words, and as you can see again with the R, I have that same issue, so I'll fix that later. Now that I have all my cursive finished, I'm going to focus on the speak louder than portion. This, I knew I wanted it to be in a simple print because I wanted eyebrows and words to stand out more with that cursive. I had the exact font I wanted in mind, I selected it, and because it's quite thin, I actually folded that. It also makes it easier to work with when you're ironing it onto your material as it has more of an adhesive surface. Now I fast forwarded through the whole part of me getting the holes back in those letters. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time, but not impossible. While doing this, I also changed the color of eyebrows and words to pink. It doesn't have to match the actual vinyl color you're going to be cutting, but you do still want it to be different than the rest so they know that you're gonna be making different cuts. And you guys will get a better explanation of that in a little bit. So now I'm just going to be adjusting it. I measured how big I want my decal to be. The numbers at the top of the screen are going to be inches, so just make it exactly the size you want it and how you want it to look. Then you'll click make it and then it's going to bring you to the screen to show you what your different cuts will look like on your mat. So I have a black vinyl and a pink vinyl. And these are the two separate cuts I'm going to be making. Whenever you're working with iron-on vinyl, be sure to mirror your design. And that just means it's going to be cutting it in reverse, and you'll see why soon. You'll go ahead and continue, and this actually gives you another reminder. If you're working with iron-on vinyl, make sure you mirror it. And you're also going to make sure you have the shiny side down, which I'll show you in a moment. So clear the plastic covering from your mat, and then you're gonna add your vinyl, shiny side down, and you're gonna align it to make sure that the cut on your computer is covered by the vinyl that you actually stick on your mat. Once you're on there, you're ready to move on. I'll load it into my machine and press the flashing arrows to make sure it's locked in place. And then I'll press the flashing pry cut cut button let the machine work its magic.
once it's finished cutting, the machine will actually flash that loading light again. Press that, unload your vinyl, and then you're ready to peel your vinyl from your mat. Now some people peel the vinyl off the mat, but I've learned turning it upside down and peeling the mat off the vinyl works a little bit better. It makes sure your vinyl stays flat as opposed to curling, which makes beading a little bit difficult. You can use that hack on future projects. Now it's time for my second cut with my rose gold vinyl. You can see the difference between the shiny and dull side a little bit better with this color. But I'm gonna lay it down, make sure the cutting surface is covered with my vinyl, stick it to my mat, and repeat the process. Again, bring it to the machine. I will say, ignore how much my machine shakes here. I tried to get a better angle for you guys, but not all the legs of my machine were actually on the desktop. But at least you guys can see what I'm doing. Again, once it's finished, you'll just press the flashing light to unload it. And then exit out of the pry cut design space because we are all finished with our computer. Again, I like to flip over my mat and peel the mat off of my vinyl instead of vice versa because just trust me, weeding vinyl that's curled up in a tube is extra difficult. Whenever I'm done with my mat, I always cover it again with that clear coat just to try to keep it as clean as possible. Now it's time for weeding. What I like to do before I start weeding is I actually like to trim my vinyl. Fun fact, this entire project is used from scraps of vinyl. So if I have enough vinyl to make another scrap to potentially use on another project, why not save it? And then we're gonna go ahead and start weeding. I don't know why, but I find this process so therapeutic. <laughs> I really enjoy even the more intricate weeding projects, smallest little details, I don't know what it is about it. Your concentration is on high, it's entertaining. <laughs> As you can see here, I have a weeding kit by iVine. I was able to find this on Amazon, and of course I love it because it's also pink. I use the weeding tool as well as the curved tweezers on most of my projects to get all of those little pieces of vinyl off of my cow. I ended up using the tweezers for the majority of this project. Uh, just for the finer little details, it was easier to get sharp little needles to pick up the vinyl as opposed to the weeding tool, which is a little bit thicker. I will then start on my rose gold decal. Again, pulling up that excess vinyl and then weeding in between all of the letters. Once I'm finished with that, I show you guys my final decal just on my desk so you can get a good idea of how it will look. Now let's move on to the ironing process. So now we're in my laundry room and I have all the materials that I need. Ironing board, I have the little bag I'm going to actually add my decals to. I have my two pieces of vinyl, as well as a piece of parchment paper. I kind of use this as my barrier between the iron and the vinyl. It has worked just fine for me so far, and I can reuse it as many times as I need. I don't have a fancy press, I just use my regular home iron. Works just fine and haven't had a problem with it yet. So whenever you're using heat on vinyl, make sure you heat up your surface first, it's just gonna help with the adhesive. You're gonna place your vinyl on exactly how you want it, get it nice and straight, take your time. Then you're gonna cover it with the parchment paper, and iron it on. Be sure to read the instructions for your uh, vinyl. All heat transfer vinyl is different. This one in particular says it wants it heated for 12 seconds, and it's also a cool peel. And that just means when you peel it up, it should have cooled off. So I did erase the time from this video. Just keep in mind, I did wait about two minutes before I peeled this up, and we're all good to go. Now, my next bit of vinyl is a hot peel. So after I found where I wanted it and ironed it on, I was able to peel it up immediately. 
I then gave one extra iron, covered it with parchment paper, just to make sure everything was on there. Now, as you all can see, this is the final product. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're interested in seeing more of my projects, go ahead and check out my Instagram page at crafty underscore travels. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified whenever I upload anything new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.